Hello, my name is John Fanger, and today I'll be discussing Galileo's principle of relativity and the advent of a heliocentric universe. Today, the concept of the Earth rotating around the Sun and spinning about a thousand miles per hour is accepted without question. Yet, in the 16th century, the idea of a moving Earth was unfathomable. Imagine living in this time period with very little certainty regarding what happens outside of Earth's realm. The only thing you could be certain about is that the Earth was not moving. Certainly you'd be able to notice if it was, with trees bending sideways, buildings collapsing, and birds being whipped backwards through the air. Therefore, when Copernicus first conceived of a heliocentric universe, he was treated as a laughingstock. Copernicus proposed that the perceived motion of the Sun around the Earth is actually the result of the Earth's revolution around the Sun. Although Copernicus's model was crucial in paving the way for an inheritance of a heliocentric system, he failed to provide an explanation for the physical implications of a moving Earth. It wasn't until the concept of relativity postulated by Galileo Galilei, the Italian astronomer born in 1564, that the notion of a moving Earth could be physically possible. The fundamental issue with Copernicus's system was that it was based in premises that contradicted the Aristotelian system of physics. Yet, Copernicus was not able to provide a new foundation of physics to replace Aristotelian concepts. Therefore, he was not able to account for the physical implications that would occur as a result of a moving Earth. Tycho Brahe, Galileo's predecessor, criticized Copernicus's notion of a moving Earth based on traditionally held Aristotelian concepts. He said that if you were to drop a ball from the top of a tower, it would follow a straight path down as its natural motion is to go to the center of the universe, which must be Earth. Yet, if the Earth were spinning, the ball would not fall directly beneath from where it was dropped, but rather many yards away because in the time it takes the ball to fall, the Earth would have spun many yards forward. Copernicus attempted to explain these physical consequences of a moving Earth by considering that the air above the Earth is connected to the Earth's movements. So, if the Earth were spinning and orbiting around the Sun, then the air would move along with the Earth too. While Copernicus was on the right track in developing ideas that attempted to explain relative motion, he could not provide a complete understanding of relativity to justify Earth's movement. By the start of the 17th century, any conception of a heliocentric universe was denied. It wasn't until the achievements of Galileo Galilei that the notion of a sun-centered universe would be considered. Galileo, unlike Copernicus, was successful because he provided an understanding of a moving Earth with tangible examples that could be understood by anyone, not just astronomers. In the dialogue concerning two chief systems of the world, Galileo famously establishes his principle of relativity, which accurately explains why we do not notice any physical consequences as the Earth moves. He confronts Brahe's criticism of Copernicus's system using Brahe's idea of the ball falling from a tower. Galileo writes, The stone that is on the top of the tower has an intrinsic inclination to revolve around the center of its hole in 24 hours, and it exercises the same natural instinct eternally, be it placed in any state whatsoever. Galileo explains that the ball shares the same motion as the earth, and so therefore it does not fall many yards away, but directly beneath the spot it is dropped. To better understand this concept, let's consider the example of a biker dropping a ball as he rides forward. Will the ball fall next to the biker or behind him? According to Galileo's theory, when the biker drops the ball as he rides forward, the ball will land right below the biker's hand rather than behind him since the ball shares the biker's forward motion. Indeed, as you can see, Galileo's theory proves accurate. Galileo theorizes that uniform motion is a natural state of being just like rest. When two frames of reference are moving in uniform motion together, it is not possible to determine if one of the frames is moving or stationary from the perspective of the other frame. It is only possible to understand an object's movement through a different point of reference. Consider this example. Imagine sitting on board a train wearing noise cancellation headphones. Now, pretend you put on a blindfold and fall asleep during the trip, and you wake up later with your eyes still covered. You would not be able to know if you are still moving forward or if you have arrived. As you sit in your seat, it would feel the exact same way as if you are sitting in a chair at home. As you take off your blindfold, 
you are now able to observe that the train is moving because you can observe the train moving past trees and other scenery. Since the trees do not share the same uniform motion as the train, you are able to observe that you are in motion using the trees as a reference point. Now, imagine tossing your phone straight up as you sit in your seat. The phone would not fly to the back of the train, but it would land back into your hand. Galileo uses this concept to explain the Earth's motion. Since we share the Earth's uniform motion, we are not able to tell whether or not we are moving unless we can compare the Earth's movement to a different frame of reference. This is why we do not feel anything or notice any physical consequences due to Earth's motion. Galileo's ability to reconcile Earth's movement redefined the way we think about the universe. While he was unable to receive strong support for his ideas during his lifetime, his concept of relativity was revolutionary in serving as the foundation for the adoption of a heliocentric system in the future. Additionally, his ideas inspired a gradual departure from the Aristotelian system of physics and provided a new understanding of physics that intellectuals would rely upon for years to come. For example, Isaac Newton was heavily dependent on Galileo's principle of relativity to develop his own concepts of absolute space versus relative space. Overall, Galileo's contributions radically changed the way society understood the world they lived in.